Welcome to the National Environmental Policy Act, also known as NEPA, Introductory Course on Coastal Zone Consistency. This course is provided by the Florida Department of Transportation's, or FDOT's, Office of Environmental Management, or OEM. This training is part of a series of introductory courses that provide guidance on FDOT's process for complying with NEPA called Project Development and Environment, or PDNE. Please see the Environmental Management Academy course catalog in the FDOT learning curve or the Office of Environmental Management website PDNE training track for other computer-based trainings in the series. Several of these trainings are referenced throughout this CBT. A link to these sites can be found at the end of this CBT on the resources page. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws described in this training are carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 USC section 327 and a memorandum of understanding dated December 14, 2016, executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. Please note you may pause the training at any time. This course contains four lessons which introduce the coastal zone and discuss FDOT's role in ensuring federal consistency as well as FDOT procedure and how inconsistency determinations are made. Whether you are a seasoned professional or this is your first exposure, this training was developed to meet the needs of all attendees. Even experienced NEPA practitioners might appreciate the focused discussions on specific topics and agency authority. More information on the topics provided in this course can be found in Part 2, Chapter 14 of the PD&E Manual. This chapter, entitled Coastal Zone Consistency, outlines procedures for determining the effects of transportation projects on Florida's coastal zone. You may want to have this chapter handy as you go through this training. This chapter is available on the FDOT Office of Environmental Management website using the link found at the bottom of this slide. This link can also connect you to other chapters of the PD&E manual that are referenced throughout this training. Both the chapter and training provide guidance on coordinating with state agencies to ensure compliance with the Coastal Zone Management Act of 1972 and the Florida Coastal Management Act of 1978. Chapter 380, Part 2, Florida Statutes. Before we delve into the process for determining the effects of FDOT's projects on the coastal zone, it is important to understand the legislation that led to the protection of this resource. According to the United States Code of Federal Regulations, or CFR, the coastal zone is comprised of the coastal waters, including the lands therein and thereunder, and the adjacent shorelands, including the waters therein and thereunder, strongly influenced by each other and in proximity to the shorelines of the several coastal states, and includes islands, transitional and intertidal areas, salt marshes, wetlands, and beaches. This definition applies to all areas in the U.S. that meet these parameters. Due to the geography of Florida, the entirety of the state is technically considered to be within the coastal zone. However, for coastal resource protection projects and activities requiring a federal consistency review, only the geographical area encompassed by Florida's 35 coastal counties and the adjoining territorial sea are treated as the coastal zone. Although not all FDOT projects require a federal coastal zone consistency review, it is important to understand why and how the coastal zone is protected by federal law. In 1970, President Richard Nixon proposed the creation of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. This proposal was made in an attempt to respond to the mounting unease over the condition of coastal resources as well as to streamline the environmental activities of the federal government. Thus, NOAA was formed as the convergence of three government agencies, the U.S. Coast Guard and Geodetic Survey, the Weather Bureau, 
and the U.S. Commission of Fish and Fisheries. One of the main roles of this agency was, and continues to be, to monitor and protect the nation's climate, environment, and associated resources. As part of this mission, NOAA was charged with developing a comprehensive coastal management program. In an effort to resolve conflicts between competing uses in the nation's coastal zone, Congress passed the Coastal Zone Management Act, or CZMA, in 1972. This act is administered by NOAA with the intent to preserve, protect, develop, and where possible, restore and enhance the resources of the nation's coastal zone. In order to achieve its goal, Congress provided coastal states with incentives to encourage them to develop and implement comprehensive management programs, which balance the need for coastal resource protection with the need for economic growth and development within the coastal zone. The CZMA authorizes the federal government through the Secretary of Commerce to provide coastal states with grants and aid to assist with the development and implementation of their coastal management program. The National Coastal Zone Management Program and the National Estuarine Research Reserve System are two programs outlined in the Coastal Zone Management Act. The National Coastal Zone Management Program promotes partnership between coastal states and territories and the U.S. federal government. As part of this program, each participating coastal state and territory designs a local coastal management program that is consistent with federal law. One of the benefits of this strategy is that the program's participants have the flexibility to consider local priorities while still ensuring CZMA consistency. An estuary is defined as a place where land-based freshwater mixes with saltwater from the sea. The National Estuarine Research Reserve System established a national network of 29 estuarine sanctuaries for the purpose of long-term research, public awareness, and education. This reserve system is also part of the partnership between NOAA and the coastal states and territories. Under the Coastal Zone Management Act's grant and aid program, coastal states are first required to submit their management programs to the Secretary of Commerce's designee, the Director of NOAA, for approval. When the state management program receives federal approval, Section 307 of the CVMA provides the state with the ability to review federal activities within or adjacent to their coastal zone to determine whether the federal activity complies with the enforceable policies included in the state's approved management program. Section 307 of the CZMA and its implementing regulations, 15 CFR Part 930, stipulate that all federal agency activities affecting any land or water use or natural resource of the coastal zone must be consistent to the maximum extent practicable with the enforceable policies of the state's federally approved management program. Federal licenses or permits and federal financial assistance for activities affecting any land or water use or natural resource of the coastal zone are required by Section 307 to be fully consistent with the enforceable policies of the state coastal management program. The Florida Coastal Management Act of 1978 Chapter 380, Part 2, Florida Statutes, authorized the state to develop a comprehensive state coastal management program based on existing statutes and rules. The Florida Coastal Management Program, or FCMP, received federal approval on September 24, 1981. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection is responsible for implementing this program. The FCMP consists of a network of 24 statutes administered by nine state agencies and the five water management districts designed to ensure the wise use and protection of the state's water, cultural, historic, and biological resources to minimize the state's vulnerability to coastal hazards, to ensure compliance with the state's growth management laws, to protect the state's transportation system, and to protect the state's proprietary interests as the owner of sovereign submerged lands. The Florida Coastal Management Program contains the enforceable policies of Florida's federally approved management program. 
It consists of the following Florida statutes and their implementing regulations in the Florida Administrative Code. The authority derived from these statutes is applied by the state agencies charged with their implementation to ensure protection of Florida's coastal resources. Here's a list of the state agencies that participate in the Florida Coastal Management Program. All five water management districts participate in the program, as well as nine other state agencies that specialize in a wide variety of disciplines. The State of Florida's Review of Federal Activities for Consistency with the CZMA is coordinated by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, or FDEP, which serves as the lead agency for the Florida Coastal Management Program. FDEP uses the State Clearinghouse, also referred to as the Clearinghouse, which is located within FDEP to facilitate the coordination process. Federal agencies and applicants are required by the Florida Coastal Management Program to provide the Clearinghouse with a detailed description of proposed federal activities in accordance with 15 CFR Part 930. Proposed federal activities are distributed by the Clearinghouse to each Florida Coastal Management Program member agency with a statutory interest in the activity. In this context, the agencies are referred to as consistency reviewers. Comments provided by the FCMP agencies are used by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to make a determination on behalf of the state of Florida regarding the consistency of a proposed federal action with the policies included in the FCMP. Now that we have discussed the legislation that led to the protection of the coastal zones, we can focus on the various roles FDOT plays as a member of the Florida Coastal Management Program. One of FDOT's roles as a member of the Florida Coastal Management Program Network is to participate in the review of federal activities to ensure consistency with the FCMP statutes under its purview. As part of this function, FDOT reviews other member agency actions, such as the construction of a new energy facility, a shorefront access and protection project, or a shoreline erosion and mitigation project. FDOT also reviews federal activities within or adjacent to the state to ensure that the federal activity will not result in adverse impacts to the state transportation system or FDOT's ability to perform its statutory functions. Individual federal actions are evaluated by FDOT for compliance with the applicable requirements of Chapter 334, Florida Statutes, Transportation Administration, and Chapter 339, Florida Statutes, Transportation Finance and Planning. It is important to note that although FDOT periodically reviews other Florida Coastal Management Program agency activities, this task does not involve FDOT projects and occurs outside of FDOT's project development process. As such, this training focuses more on FDOT projects requiring federal consistency and how FDOT submits its projects for review by other FCMP agencies. Federal consistency determination generally takes place early on for projects screened as part of the Efficient Transportation Decision Making or ETDM process during planning. ETDM will be discussed in greater detail in Lesson 3. After the early review has taken place, another consistency review may take place again as part of the permitting process. When FDOT is seeking federal funding, a determination of consistency with the FCMP may be required prior to the allocation of federal funds for the project. If the project also requires a federal license or permit, a separate consistency review for federal licenses or permit applications may be required in accordance with 15 CFR Section 930, part, Subpart D, and Section 380.23 for the statutes. Consistency review of projects which require permits from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Coast Guard, or a state environmental resource permit are conducted during the permitting process. In accordance with Section 380.23 Florida Statutes, 
The issuance or denial of the state permit serves as the state's consistency decision for analogous U.S. Army Corps of Engineers or U.S. Coast Guard permits. Procedures governing the consistency review of analogous state permits are included in Section 373.428 Florida Statute. Now that we have discussed how FDOT both reviews other Florida Coastal Management Program agency projects and submits federal projects for review by other participating agencies, we can discuss how FDOT ensures federal consistency for its projects requiring review. FDOT projects that will require a federal action, such as a federal license or permit or a connection to the interstate, will require a federal consistency review. A consistency review is also required if federal funds are needed for any phase of project implementation. Environmental assessments, or EAs, and environmental impact statements, or EISs, always require a federal consistency review. And type two categorical exclusions usually require one. State environmental impact reports, or SEERS, only require a consistency review when a federal or state license or permit is required, while type one categorical exclusion only undergo a review if required as part of the permitting process. For projects requiring the preparation of an advanced notification package, the ETDM coordinator or project manager prepares the package in accordance with Part 1, Chapter 3 of the PD&E Manual and Chapter 4 of the ETDM Manual. A link to these manuals can be found on the resources page. Refer to the NEPA introductory course, preliminary environmental discussion, and advanced notification for more details regarding the AN package. The advanced notification can occur during the programming screen or be processed separately before the PD&E study. If done during screening, the completed advanced notification package is emailed along with a programming screen notice to the state clearinghouse and to each Florida Coastal Management Program consistency reviewer with a statutory interest in the activity. The clearinghouse may then forward the information to additional interested parties if needed. The federal consistency review process in the Environmental Screening Tool, or EST, can be found in Chapter 4 of the ETDM Manual. Issuance of the electronic notice for the programming screen begins a 45 calendar day comment period to allow for the distribution, receipt, and discussion of agency responses consistent with the programming screen and federal consistency review. Upon notification, consistency reviewers are responsible for providing comments in the EST to ensure that the project complies with the statutes and requirements within their jurisdiction. Each state agency's consistency reviewer will also indicate whether or not the project is consistent with the Florida Coastal Management Program. The Clearinghouse has 15 days after receipt of all comments to complete the federal consistency review for the state of Florida. The Clearinghouse consolidates the consistency reviewer's comments, reviews the comments, and indicates the determination of the project's consistency with the FCMP in the EST. This consistency decision is based on the consistency determinations of all state agencies with a statutory interest in the project. Should additional review time be required, a written request for a 15-day time extension must be submitted to the district ETDM coordinator within the initial 45-day comment period. If more than a 30-day extension is required by the clearinghouse, the project should be placed into issue resolution until the review is complete. The issue resolution process will be discussed in further detail later in this training. The district should not proceed with further project development before receiving a consistency determination. During the planning phase, the finding of consistency is included in the final programming screen summary report as shown here. 
This report should clearly document that the project is consistent with the Coastal Zone Management Program, as well as providing the date that consistency was determined. Changes in a determination can come at any stage of project development. If after review of the advanced notification for federal aid projects, a FCMP agency determines that the project is no longer consistent, the consistency determination may be modified. There is also an opportunity for the clearinghouse to review EA and EIS documents after location design and concept acceptance. Upon approval, these environmental documents are submitted to the clearinghouse through the EST. Note that a subsequent consistency review is very rare for SDOT projects and is unlikely to be required. During the PB&E phase, FDEP's finding of consistency from the ETDM screening is referenced in the environmental document for a type two categorical exclusion that went through ETDM screening, the finding is linked to the type two categorical exclusion determination form. This standard statement is also placed in the environmental document. The state of Florida has determined that this project is consistent with the Florida Coastal Zone Management Program. Additionally, the standard statement should also be included in the final environmental impact statement or FEIS, Executive Summary, when applicable. Now that we have learned how to ensure and document consistency with the Florida Coastal Management Program, it is time for our fourth and final lesson. This topic will introduce you to FDEP's process for addressing a project that has been determined to be inconsistent with the FCMP. Whenever a project is determined to be inconsistent with the FCMP, a letter of inconsistency will be issued by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection on behalf of the state. A finding of inconsistency must cite the section of the relevant statute under the reviewing agency's authority with which the project is inconsistent and must identify actions that can be taken to resolve the conflict. Prior to actually issuing a finding of inconsistency, the reviewing agency should immediately call the clearinghouse if problems are identified. If any consistency reviewing agency indicates that the project is not consistent, this would trigger discussions with the clearinghouse and possibly initiate the issue resolution process described in Chapter 4 of the ETDM manual. If an inconsistency letter is received, it is uploaded to the environmental screening tool to support documentation for the project file. If significant concerns are identified during the AN review, the district will be advised by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection of conditions of approval or the need for additional coordination. The clearinghouse should be provided with project information of sufficient scope and detail to determine whether the project is consistent with the requirements of all applicable FCMP statutes. The requested project information should be provided as soon as the information becomes available. All issues or concerns identified during the AN review should be addressed. If a recommendation or determination of inconsistency with the Florida Coastal Management Program is made by the Clearinghouse and its consistency reviewing agencies during advanced notification, the project will go through the ETDM issue resolution process which is discussed in detail in Chapter 2 of the ETDM Manual. The goal of the ETDM issue resolution process is to resolve conflicts at the agency staff level, providing as many opportunities for resolution as possible prior to elevation of the dispute within FDOT and the review agencies. Once the issue has been resolved, the issue resolution process will be documented in the environmental screening tool. The Environmental Screening Tool Handbook provides additional guidance on tracking and documenting the issue resolution process. A link can be found on the resources page. If a state agency determines that a project is inconsistent at a later stage of project development, the agency must provide FDEP with a written determination signed by the agency head or authorized designee 
which includes the following. Number one, the specific statutes, rules, or regulations with which the project is in conflict. And number two, provide for FDOT's consideration of suggest suggested alternatives, if any, that would allow the project to be consistent with the Florida Coastal Management Program. Where an agency fails to identify the authority with which the project is in conflict, or the agency's objection is signed by an unauthorized individual, the determination will not form the basis of a finding of inconsistency by FDEP, the lead coastal management agency. If FDEP receives a state agency objection or notice of a pending objection, FDOT will be advised of the basis for the objection. FDEP will work in consultation with the governor's office, the Florida Department of Transportation, and the objecting agency to resolve the objection prior to the need for a formal state consistency decision. If the objection cannot be resolved, the FDEP will provide OEM and NOAA, Office of Ocean and Coastal Resource Management, with the state consistency objection letter in accordance with 15 CFR Part 930. When FDOT receives a letter of inconsistency from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection or when it is communicated via the director level or above that a letter of inconsistency is anticipated, FDOT will not advance the project to the design phase until an agreement allowing the objection to be lifted is reached between the objecting agency and FDOT. The FDEP will mediate interagency disputes in an in attempt to resolve conflicts. If, after the FDEP mediation, an objecting agency continues to deem the project to be inconsistent, FDOT and or the Florida Department of Environmental Protection may refer the objection to the governor for final determination in accordance with section 380.23 parens 2 parens B Florida statutes. In the event of a disagreement between FDEP and OEM regarding whether or not a federal assistance activity is subject to consistency review, the Office of Environmental Management may seek mediation by the Secretary of Commerce in accordance with 15 CFR section 930.99. In such cases, the procedures and time limits set forth in 15 CFR section 930.99 subpart G will apply. The Office of Environmental Management maintains a central library of training materials as well as documents and publications including manuals, handbooks, guidelines, and agreements. Key references pertinent to this training include the Environmental Management Academy course catalog which is an FDOT learning curve. This is what it looks like in learning curve. Other resources include the PD&E manual, the ETDM manual, the Environmental Screening Tool Handbook, the FDEP Florida Coastal Management Program State Clearinghouse Manual, and the FDEP Guide to the Federally Approved Florida Coastal Management Program. <laughs>